Hi all, this is guide number four, and this is going to be sort of a two-part video. Um, the first part is going to be about uh, wear and tear on manga, um, how to keep your collection nice and avoid some of the common um, um, ways that your comics can deteriorate over time. Uh, and then the second half will be about organizing your manga and keeping track of them. Uh, comics are one of the collectibles that appreciate in value over time. Um, and there's a lot of factors that will go into to telling how much um, your collection will be worth later on. Um, some people want to know this because they, they feel like it's an investment and they're going to sell it later to cash in on the appreciated value, or some just like, like knowing that their collection that they're always going to keep with them is worth more now than it was before. That's just part of the allure of collecting. Um, and so, uh, one of the primary things that's going to determine how much your comics are worth later on is, of course, their popularity. Um, the more popular the series is when it first debuted, the more likely you're going to find people who want to buy it or people who value it later on. Um, so, for example, a series like Naruto, uh, everybody knows Naruto. Naruto is really popular right now, so this is going to be a lot more worth a lot more later on than, say, Toshu's, which not as many people know about. So. Just the, the popularity, of course, is probably the number one factor. Um, the second factor, of course, is condition. Um, a mint condition book is going to be worth a lot more than like a used condition, like where maybe it has some torn pages or a dog-eared page. Dar a dog-eared page is when... Um, do I have one here? Yeah. A dog-eared page is when like the edge of one is, is bent down like this. That's called dog-earing. And uh, some people do that on purpose in like a textbook if they're trying to keep their place. Sometimes it happens by accident if you're putting your book on the shelf like this way and like a, another book gets caught in there and pushes the page down so you have to be careful when you put your books on the shelf. Um, so that's dog earring. Um, some other factors, uh, another major factor that's going to affect the condition is uh, foxing. And actually let me back up a second and first tell you um, the three main things that are going to damage your books over time. Uh, and those are sunlight, heat, and moisture. Um, so I'm sure that you've all seen a poster. You're walking down the street, you see a poster, and it looks faded, and it looks you only see, like, blue color in it, or you only see, like, yellow. Um, that's because the sun has um, uh, sucked the color Your hair will lighten in the sun. That's because it's, like, kind of sucking some of the color out of it. I don't know the whole science behind that, but it does. The first color um, to go if you leave something in direct sunlight is yellow. And then after that, the reds and magentas. Um, and then after that, uh, blue and cyan. You usually see blue posters. That's what I always see. I always see everything's been sucked out except the blue. Anyway, so an ex I have an example of that. Uh, this is something to look out for if you're buying used comics. Um, try to be familiar with the series that you're buying. Like, try to see what a brand new cover looks like. Um, so that when you're looking in the store, you know that oh, is that bleached out, or is that the ni is that nice color? Like, for example, here's here's a spine, right? That looks okay to you, right? It's really not, though, because look. If I put um, a better condition one next to it, see, it's actually supposed to be this bright red. And this is the original one I showed you, and it's faded. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's an example of this book was in direct sunlight for a while, and uh, the color, the, the red started oh, coming out. Of course, out. it's okay to buy used books. I buy used books. I have, that's why I have all these examples to show you. I have some more. Um, used books are great if, if you, even if you don't care about collecting, used books are perfect, because then you can go get a series for one dollar, read it, and you haven't wasted that much money. Um, I like used books because um, most of the time I can walk in and buy a whole set, or most of a set, or fill in the gaps in a collection, you know, in a series that I don't have them all yet. Uh, for cheap, because I don't really, there's a few series where I want to get the mint condition first issue, but mo most, m for the most part, I just want to own the series sometime, and I don't really care, as long as they're not, as long as they're not missing pages, I don't care really the condition, so that's okay. Um, I guess the important thing is balance. Um, if you, you know, you have some that are mint condition that you really care about and take good care of and try not to read them that often. Uh, so that you don't do wear and tear on the pages or the cover or the spine. Um, but yeah, it's all up to you. There's nothing wrong with used books. Um, so I was just saying something about wear and tear. Uh, if you read a book often and you're opening and closing it a lot, going like this, going through the pages, you open it up wide, um, 
Remember that most manga are, the spine is made out of glue, and everything's paper. So, for example, this one's been touched a lot and read a lot, so the spine here on the on this edge of the jacket is like uh, the paint and color has crisped off because of fingers touching it like this. Um, and then, this can happen from moisture and, and heat. The glue on the spine will get brittle, and that can cause pages to start falling out, or in the case of this book, the cover has detached from the glue. So you can see the glue here. Okay? Alright. Um, the other thing that moisture and heat will do is uh, it causes a phenomenon in, the, in, in, your, in your pages called foxing, which is if you've seen a really old book and it looks yellowy, the pages look yellowy, that's called foxing. And here's an example of foxing. I'm going to put it right next to a brand new book so you can see the difference. So here's the new book, and here's the really old book with foxing. The pages are all yellowy. Mm -hmm. You know, the oil from your fingers uh, and just the bending of the pages over and over again is going to cause uh, degradation in the paper. Um, something to help prevent this from happening. I put two links in the side. I don't know which side, but you know, the sidebar with information. I put two links. Uh, I, I don't know these companies or these websites, but I just looked really quick and they have these plastic manga covers. Um, that, because these are obviously different than, uh, than, uh, American comics, which are just like one thin chapter. Those have different care instructions, but anyway, you can buy those if you really, really want to protect something important. You can get the plastic jackets, uh, and they, they look, they're the same shape as this and they just slip over top of it so that you can touch your cover and not, and it won't. It's, you know, protective. Vo volume 1 is always going to be the most valuable within the whole series. Um, the other thing to look out for is if it's a popular storyline and something major happened in the storyline, uh, that the volume that has that major event in it is also going to be important. So, of course, if you have a, a whole almost complete set but have some gaps, that, 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 that collection as a whole is going to be worth a little bit less than, you know, the complete set of something. Now I'm going to move on to um, organizing manga. Okay, there's my shelf back there. It looks organized, but it's probably not as organized as it could be. Like, for example, people, uh, of course, each different series is printed by a different um, publisher. Um, two examples from Japan are Shueisha and Kodansha. Uh, if I wanted to, I would uh, round up all the ones by Kodansha, put them in one section, round up all the shueishas, put them in one section, um, and do it like that. Another way to do it is to order it by, of course, author, and put all the, uh, the one author's stuff together. Uh, the way that I organize, oh, you could also do alphabetical order. The way that I organize I is, told you uh, that, like, on the very top shelf, I put comic books that I don't really care that much about, and then kind of at at face, chest level, I put my important stuff and storing your manga. It's always best to store them up and down, vertically, as opposed to horizontally. Um, and that just, it puts a little, it puts less stress on the book to store it this way with its all its companions, you know, because it, it holds it together like this, nice and tight, as opposed to going like this, and then, you know, you can kind of bend it, you see what I mean? So far, I've been keeping a list on my website. Uh, just in alphabetical order, uh, English alphabetical order. I even have, I have, um, the English language list and the Japanese language list. And the Japanese language list is not listed in Japanese alphabetical order. It's still listed in the same order as my English list so that people who are looking at both can be like, oh yeah, that's, that's that. So um, if you look at a hiragana chart, that's the alphabetical order that the books will be in, uh, if they're by author in the bookstore. Oh. Uh, if you don't have a website or you don't want to, you don't want to put your collection on the web, you can always use um, Excel or a simple Word document to keep a running list. Start with the original Japanese title in Japanese characters, if you can. Um, next would be the romanization. Taki shi shido. So you'd be T A K I S H I. After that, um, put the direct translation, because next, if you want, is going to be the title that they called it in your country of origin. Uh, after that, you'll put the printing number, you know, the edition number, as discussed in video three. So, um, please go watch that if you have not watched that yet. After that, volume number, so... 
So, issue number one, for example. Uh, after that, you'll want to put the ISBN number, which is this number right here, um, the condition. So for this, it's a little bit foxed and a few nicks on the cover, so I would say like good condition. The most important, if, if nothing else, Japanese title, Romanized title, edition number, volume number, and condition. As always, leave me your comments, subscribe, uh, and I'll talk to you soon.